Giordignano, with its 1900 inhabitants, is part of the Union of Towns named Terretoriente, and it is situated in the Salentinian territory, a few kilometers from Otranto, on the central eastern side of the province of Lecce. Justifiably described as the Italian megalithic garden, the town of Giordignano is home to an incredible historical and monumental heritage. This dates back to the Iron Age and is visible in the abundant presence of dolmen and benir, which embellish the rocking landscape. The territory carefully preserves ancient vestiges of the Salentinian agricultural pastoral civilization and the countryside presents traces of the prosperous agricultural economy. In fact, it is visible in the well-kept olive trees and in the traditional rural structures such as the paillare and the dry stone walls, which mark and distinguish the surrounding landscape. The perfumed breeze of the Strait of Otranto blows over the verdant countryside, where the olive trees grow spontaneously and form vast woods which extend throughout the surrounding territory. For centuries, olive production has supported the economy of Giordignano, and still today, the oil pressed from local olives excels in the Salentinian agri-food sector because of its legitimacy and exquisite taste. The abundance of the fruits of the countryside comes forward in the culinary tradition of Giordignano that lives on with patience and refinement in notable restaurants which animate the ancient village. These typical dishes are the stars of the famous tables of St. Joseph, an ancient custom of the territory of Otranto. In fact, on the 19th of March, every year, on the fifth day of the Saint, the community of Giordignano sets the tables with local delicious and wholesome dishes for the whole community. Formerly, the tables of St. Joseph represented a moment of Christian charity, evidenced by the convivial hospitality and the assistance directed towards the needy. The settlement of the area by men dates back to ancient times, although the first archival sources concerning Giordignano date to the Norman Swabian period, when the fiefdom was granted by Tancredi d'Altavilla to Niccolò de Noa. The history of the community of Giordignano is visible along the small streets of the ancient village. Here one discovers the charm of the Salentinian reality and is enchanted with the warm colors of the buildings, which stand out against the blue sky. The turbulent past of the Salentinian borders during the Turkish attacks and incursions is visible in the different buildings situated in the historic center. Villay Palace is an example, a turreted building dating back to the 16th century, characterized by an imposing ashlar portal. The history of Giordignano is visible to visitors through its beautiful historic artistic decorations, which show its important past imbued with the Italo-Greek culture and the religious tradition still present in the life of the community. Visiting Giordignano is like walking in the gardens of the Salentinian history, with a great sensitivity towards the tourist welcoming and the cultural valorization.
the heart of the historic center of Giordignano centers around the parish church and the baronial palace. Houses and town palaces surround the municipal square, which features the Baroque obelisk of San Rocco, erected in the center of the town in 1772 by the community of Giordignano to honor its patron saint. The streets of the historic center branch off around the square, where the main roads of the town converge. The urban architectural appearance of Giordignano is dominated by the presence of primarily one-story buildings, but as well important examples of palaces, which are the result of the building renewal and economic growth of the 18th century. The square is characterized by the façade of the parish church, built in the 18th century. The three statues which surmount the entrance portal represent Christ with the prophets Elijah and Moses in the context of the transfiguration of Jesus. They illustrate the namesake of the main church of Giordignano. The side niches contain the statues of two bishops and doctors of the church, St. Augustine and St. Ambrose. The interior of the building presents a Latin cross plan. The opulent stacos and the vivid colors enhance and enrich the structure, which is the center of devotional life in Giordignano. A few minutes away from the historic center, one admires the characteristic Trapitello del Duca, an underground oil mill constructed in 1518 and active until 1940. Inside, one can admire the original equipment used for the production of olive oil, the most precious product of the Sanentinian feudal economy. The niches positioned on the walls once received the olives deposited by laborers from openings located on the upper side of the mill. These fruits were stored in specially designed containers and subdivided before pressing depending on their origin. By visiting the underground oil mill one can imagine the ancient sights and sounds of this ancient structure, the odors of the headmaster, the neighing of animals, and the screeching of the presses. The baronial palace of Giordignano represents the heritage of the aristocratic power of the Alfarano Capice family, lords of the place from the 18th century until the dissolution of the feudal system. It is situated on the southern side of the historic center and access is provided by a characteristic ashlar portal located in the municipal square in the middle of the town. The history of the structure begins in the 15th century, when the first nucleus of the building was established by a 15th century tower, still distinguishable on the southeast side of the town. After the tragic events of 1480 and the Turkish invasion of Otranto, 
and the surrounding Salentinian fiefdoms, the building was subjected to important structural changes made to improve the defensive systems. But in the 17th century, this military structure was transformed into a noble residence, as were the majority of the defensive buildings in Terra d'Otranto. The construction of the monumental entrance, decorated with a delightful barrel vault, dates back to the same period. With the Alfarano Capice family, the building was enriched with noble elements, such as the gallery of the palace, adorned with recently renovated frescoes. Another symbol of the structural refinement is the monumental balcony, which decorates a part of the external facade. The palace is among the assets enhanced by the association SAC Porta d'Oriente. It has been recently renovated thanks to the commitment of the municipal administration, and now it is an important cultural landmark of the community of Giordignano. There are many varied witnesses relating to the Italo-Greek word, a culture which for centuries has influenced the artistic, linguistic and religious tradition of Terra d'Otranto. The heritage of the Eastern monasticism is evident in the abbey complex, named the Hundred Doors, situated in the Levantine countryside of Giordignano. The ruins date back to the early Middle Ages and they are attributable to an Italo-Greek monastic foundation, which is, according to some historians, the table to the 5th, 6th century. The structure has changed considerably over time, in particular during the Norman domination. According to tradition, the church was dedicated to the saints Cosmas and Damien. A hypothesis confirmed by the presence of ancient frescoes representing the two saints, as attested by the Archbishop of Otranto during his pastoral visit in 1608. Another jewel of the cultural heritage of Giordignano is the crypt of San Salvatore carved into the tufa in the southern outskirts of the historic center. It is a Byzantine religious underground building, with three naves and three apses, subdivided by the characteristic bema, an architectural typology dating to the 8th century. Inside one admires different fragments of frescoes, which once embellished the walls of the church. The walls are magnificent and rich in ancient charm, and they were carved in the living stone. The crypt of San Paolo unites the megalithic world with the religious devotion of Giordignano. Carved into the rocky embankment, which also contains the menhir of the same name, the underground structure presents a fresco of St. Paul, the saint invoked for protection against the bites of poisonous animals. It is not by coincidence that the image of the apostle is flanked by a spider intent on weaving its web a demonstration of the relationship which links St. Paul to the phenomenon of Tarantismo.
The town of Giordignano is known in the Apulian cultural and tourist world as the Italian megalithic garden. It is not by coincidence that the territory of Giordignano presents many menhir and dolmen, dating back to the Iron Age and located in the town and in the surrounding countryside. The municipal administration promoted different trails for the exploration of these megaliths. Very interesting is the pathway with its starting point in Vigo Nuovo Square with the two twins menhir. The first menhir is 2.50 meters high and it has an octagonal base. The other one reaches up to 2.40 meters in height and it has a quadrangular plan. Near the Trapitello del Duca one can continue the trail in order to admire the majestic Menhir Vicinanze 1, so named because of the previous existence of a farmhouse in the territory. The Menhir reaches a height of more than 2 meters and probably in past years it was Christianized and utilized as a form of jubilation. In the same area, one admires the Menhir Vicinanze 2, with a rocky base and a height of 4.5 meters. Continuing towards the countryside, one meets the Dolmen Quattro Magine, or Dolmen Stabile, situated between Giordignano and Giugianello. Discovered by Pasquale Maggiulli in 1893, the monument exceeds one and a half meters, while it has a width of 2.60 meters and a depth of 1.80 meters. It is fascinating to follow the megalithic trail, possible even after sunset, with contrasting light and shadow, thanks to the lighting devices installed on a good part of the itinerary. The rich megalithic scenario evokes a mysterious, charming and evolved civilization. The area was home to a people with a special technological capacity, as well as an adequate social organization, allowing for the realization of imposing architectural works, which continue to stand today.